الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد حبت في الله امام بخاري رحمه الله تعالى في المسفق he entitled uh, a short chapter in his book which we know to be sahih bukhari babun al ma'asi min amr al jahiliya wala yukaffiru sahibaha bi irtikabiha illa bi shirk imam bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala he mentioned and this is a refutation and he part of the fiqh of bukhari here is showing it's a refutation of the khawarij of groups like in our contemporary times, of course, like uh, Aysal Boko Haram, Ash-Shabaab, and other takfiri groups, and other people who have a distorted aqidah, which goes against Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Fahim of the Salaf of this Ummah. So in fact, this is a refutation of them. So he entitled this chapter, Sins are from ignorance, and a sinner is not a disbeliever unless he worships others along with Allah Azawajal letting us know that as long as a person has not done the major shirk which takes him out of the fold of Islam or the major kufr which takes a person out of the fold of Islam then for their sins they are not uh, they are not disbelievers as long as it is not something which is ma'num in a deen which is which is uh, known by necessity to take one out of the fold of Islam listen to this hadith the hadith of Abi Dharm عن أبي ذر رضي الله تعالى عنه قال سببت رجلا فعيرته بأمه فقال لي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أبا ذر عيرته بأمه إنك أمر 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 فيك جاهلية إخوانكم خولكم جعلهم الله تحت أيديكم فمن كان أخوه تحت يده فليت فليت فليتعمه مما يأكل وليلبسه مما يلبس ولا يكلفوهم ما يغلبهم فإن كلفتموهم ف ف ف أعينه فعينهم Ruahu Bukhari. In this hadith of Sahih Bukhari, the hadith of Abu Dhar narrated Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala anhu I abused a man by calling his mother with bad names. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said to me, O oh, Abu Dhar, did you abuse him by calling his mother with bad names? You still have some characteristics of, of ignorance, meaning the days of ignorance, jahiliya. Your slaves are your brothers, and Allah has put them under your command. So whoever has a brother under his command should feed him of that which he eats and dress him of that which he wears. Do not ask them to do things beyond their capacity. And if you do so, then help them. In this hadith of the Prophet Wasallam, it gives us the important prophetic edit for how, how we deal with people who are under our authority. Whether it be in the case of Abu Dhar, it was a slave. Whether it be uh, others that you're charged in authority over them. Maybe you're an employer and you have employees. Maybe it is uh, even uh, your family and those who you charge in authority over that you should care for them, that you should take, take care of their needs and that you should not belittle them and mistreat them. What we also gain from this hadith, the hadith of Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, it shows us the major sin of cursing someone and speaking about someone's mother. And as an aside, if we reflect upon our own cultures, and I can speak primarily, uh, especially about African American culture, in America in general, and in many cultures, but especially uh, in the African American culture, that that is almost like war when you speak about a person's mother. One of the things for sure, if you wish to uh, do battle with someone, or fight someone, or uh, be killed by someone or initiate uh, violence, speak about a person's mother, then this will set it off to where you will uh, be able to, you will have violence. 
So this is the case also with the Arabs and even prior to Islam, that this was something grave to speak about someone's mother. And it's a grave sin to speak and curse someone. And this instigates them to even speak against your mother, as it was mentioned in another hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that, you know, that not to speak about someone's mother and not to speak about to curse someone, because it would have them to curse your mother or curse your lineage or curse your father or be racist towards you. If you're racist towards someone and you mention their race, this will cause them to trigger and reciprocate that same evil racism and it will come back to you. They will speak about your people and belittle your tribe, and belittle your lineage, and what have you, and so forth. Likewise, this is also an, another lesson, which is mentioned in the other hadith, not the hadith that we're studying, is the fact that also, which is a similar, the same principle, that you should not belittle people's gods. Now, especially we find a lot of times new Muslims, and, and us as converts to the deen, and reverts, if, if you will, that often, out of our zeal, we begin to speak ill about the religion of our, our fathers in, in the most short, shortest span of time, meaning that those who come from Christian backgrounds or Jewish backgrounds or whatever, that they begin to curse or speak ill of things that are sacred and holy to the people of those faiths. When you do to those people, what do you think they're going to do? So they're, of course they're going to begin to curse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you curse Isa alayhi salatu salam, for example, we know they worship Isa and that's on battle, that's on falsehood. But you would become a disbeliever because you curse one of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alayhi salatu wa salam. So we have to be careful and know that when you deal with people that you are going to reciprocate if you uh, do a harm, you will reciprocate. You will have that harm reciprocated towards you. This goes under another hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, which is a qa'id al which is a fake principle, which is the Prophet ﷺ said, la dharam wa la dirar. Do not harm and there's no reciprocating harm. So likewise, if you curse someone and you attack someone, then you are opening yourself to be cursed and yourself to be attacked. If you speak about someone's mother, or someone's father, someone's lineage, someone's race, someone's tribe, then you are opening yourself up to those same attacks. So it shows us that the prophetic adab that we learn in manners is that we should avoid this, and we should not curse people, and we should not attack the honor of people, even if the people are people you disagree with, even if the people are people of disbelief. If you go up to the Hindus or to a Hindu, and you say to him, Krishna such and such, Shiva such and such, something like this, and you curse them. What do you think they're going to do? They're going to speak about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They're going to speak about Allah Azza wa Jal. And so then you've caused a greater harm. La dara wa la dira. No harm and no reciprocating harm. Another benefit of this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is as Imam Bukhari mentioned, and this is the fiqh of Bukhari, that Ma'asi uh, is from the affairs of Jahiliyyah or Al Ma'asi min Amr Jahiliyyah. The sins that are from the era of Jahiliyyah or sins in general, the point in the fiqh of this, wala yukafra sahibaha bi irtikabiha. That the person who does sins is not outside of the fold of Islam. So that is something very important, especially for. Uh, not just new Muslims, but people who are ignorant of this principle, is to know that when we see uh, our, our brother and sister drinking alcohol, or see our brother and sister uh, smoking weed or crack, or whatever the case may be, or committing zina, having girlfriends, whatever the case may be, these are major sins, yes, and lying and cheating, major sins. They don't take someone out of the fold of Islam. And so that is the point that we have to know and understand and likewise, as with other major sins, sometimes it, that we find from the leaders, sometimes we fall, find from those who are charged in authority over us, that they don't take them out of the fold of Islam. But what you see 
from the people of Tekfir and the people who are affected by the methodology of the Khawarij is that they make Tekfir of the Kabira or make Tekfir of Ahla Kabair. They make Tekfir or they declare the people who do major sins to be apostates. And this is incorrect. And this is from Baal. And this is from misguidance. And so we learn from the fiqh of Imam Bukhari, it shows us Imam Bukhari was not on this, and he was refuting this, and that this is the medheb and the midhaj of the salaf of this ummah, the correct understanding of the kitab wa sunnah, is that the major sinner is not an inhabitant uh, who dwells in the hellfire forever. That major sinners will be taken out of of, of the hellfire according to a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and likewise that the major sinner is not the person who inhabits the hellfire forever so therefore we don't make takfir of them we don't declare them to be disbelievers but rather the person who may be a fasik rather the first the person may be a muqtadiya rather the person may be um, uh, you know an oppressor or whatever uh, falling under the various categories of sins, but it doesn't take them out of the fold of Islam. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.